Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about Bloom which is the final brand new Danjo reaction that we're going to get in the Genshin 3.0 patch and we're going to talk about how it might shake up the Genshin Impact meta. However, as always, take these kind of video with a giant grain of salt because most of these information are based on leaks which could not only change at any given moment but also simply could just be wrong. As always, treat this video more like a hypothesis about how these team could have interesting potential in the future rather than an actual definition conclusion. That being said, as always, don't forget to comment like, subscribe, you know it, and let's get started. First things first, let's start by talking about how Bloom is triggered. You can do a Bloom reaction by applying Dandro and Hydro onto the same enemy. In this case, a Bloom reaction will trigger and a seed will then be created onto the ground. Now, just like traditional Genshin Impact reaction, the order of operation here actually matter. The first element you apply onto the enemy will be called the aura and will be retained on the enemy even after you trigger the reaction, assuming there's enough elemental gauge left. However, the second element that you apply onto the enemy will be the trigger. It will immediately react with the aura element and take away certain amount of gauge from the aura element, therefore producing the blue reaction. Traditional Genshin Impact reaction have a direction as well, depending on which one is your aura and which one is your trigger. For example, looking at Vaporize, which is produced with Hydro and Pyro, if you use a Pyro attack onto a Hydro aura enemy, then in this case, you do 1.5 times damage and take away very little amount of Hydro aura. However, in the other direction where you do a pyro aura followed by a hydro attack on top, in this case, while you do greater damage, which is two times damage, you also take away a large amount of the elemental gauge because this is the forward direction. In the case of Bloom, Dandro will be the more dominant element. So in this case, if you do a Dandro aura followed by a hydro trigger, it will consume a lot less gauge because this is the reverse direction. Where on the other hand, if you do a hydro aura followed by a Dandro trigger, it will consume a much larger amount of elemental gauge. However, you might be questioning does the direction change the damage since in the case of Vaporize, it will determine if you're going to be doing 2 times damage or just 1.5 times damage. In this case, the damage does not get affected based on which direction you go, simply because in both cases, you simply create a seed on the ground which will then later be triggered by an other character. So the direction here does not affect the damage, however, it simply affects the amount of gauge you consume. Because of that, it is much more efficient to do this in the reverse way, which is to doing a Danjo Aura followed by a Hydro Trigger, simply because it uses less elemental gauge but produces the same results, and this is very important. With that being said, there are a few important factors about this seed that you really should know about. Starting off, you can only have 5 seed at the time. If you attempt to do another Bloom reaction and create a 6 seed, then the first seed that you create will actually just explode and do Danjo damage. The other way you can explode this seed without doing a reaction is simply to wait. The seed have a timer on it and they'll explode within 6 seconds. So if you don't proc the seed manually within 6 seconds, they will also explode and do dangerous damage. Now of course, there are ways and methods that you can detonate the seed manually as well. Starting off with Electro. By applying Electro directly on the seed or nearby the seed, you can trigger Hyper Bloom and this seed will transform into homing missile targeting onto a single target and you'll do single target dangerous damage onto that single target. On the other hand, by doing a Pyro reaction, you can trigger what is called a uh, virgin? virgin. With the burger reaction, you will be able to trigger a large AOE explosion area that will do dangerous damage to all the nearby enemy. Most important though is that the reaction with virgin will also self damage yourself. So you want to make sure that you are healed up consistently with a healer or with a shooter so that you don't die from triggering too much reaction. You can see how in all three cases, they always always do dangerous damage no matter the reaction. However, another very key limitation that you should know about is that only two seed can do damage at a time. So you can create five seed on the field and you can try to proc all of them together by doing like an electro or pyro reaction. However, only two of these seed will actually be able to damage enemy. So there's actually an upper limit of how many seed can attack the enemy at the same time, similar to how Swarrow can only proc twice on a single enemy. So it doesn't matter if you have all five seed on the ground at once and you try to do it large explosion, it doesn't work. There are a few other specific 
you should probably know about Bloom before it proceeds. Starting off with the damage calculation, these reactions are considered transformative reaction and scale based off the trigger character's elemental mastery. Now the good news here is that because Hyper Bloom as well as Burgeon are requiring a third character to trigger, and in the cases of Hyper Bloom, it requires a electro character to trigger. Since your electro character is always going to be the character that finally proc Hyper Bloom, the damage calculation is always going to be your electro characters, and the same pretty much go for Burgeon with your pyro characters, which is great. That means that the damage calculation part are very easy to control. Now, some of you might have noticed is that, well, you will also need a element application in order to trigger the seed. Does that mean that it is terrible for a character with long ICD like Toma or Kuki? Fortunately, that's not the case because ICD is independent per target and each seed is considered to be a unique separate target. That means anytime your Toma attack the seed, it will proc a pyro application and it will proc a burgeon. And this is the same when it comes down to Kuki. Anytime Kuki attack the seed, it will successfully proc your hyper bloom. And the same does not go about your primary target that you're attacking. When you're attacking a single target, you're still subjected to ICD. That means what could happen is that Kuki could fail to apply Electro onto your primary attacking target, but successfully applied Electro onto the seed and triggering Hyper Bloom in the process. This interaction could be very useful when it comes down to controlling how we apply the element, especially when we're facing certain target. A final call is that the seed can be picked up by animal unit like Sucrose, Kazua, or Venti because your elemental burst can infuse with an element and therefore also trigger a seed. Putting in a Nemo character into your Hyper Bloom team or your Burger team could also be a very viable strategy depending on what you are doing and depending on how you're triggering the seed. Coming into the team section, the first thing to remind everyone just like the previous two video is that at the end of the day, no matter how good Dandro reaction is, it will still dramatically depend on the Dandro characters. For example, in the international team, yeah, I can put a Dandro character here instead of Kazu, which is the Animo character to do some of the new Dandro reaction. But will that really be better than just using Kazu and playing a traditional international team? Since Kazu can apply both Hyrosworld and Hydrosworld to give both character a dramatic damage increase? Well, that would really depend on what kind of danger character we get. So keep in mind that there is still a lot of unknown based on whatever how good the actual danger character is. But with that being said, let's talk about a really fun potential Borgon team. Let's start with International Virgin, which is the traditional national team setup with Chao, Bennett, Chang League, and then finally a brand new danger of few characters. In this case, you do a similar rotation as the traditional national team where you have Chao supplying a lot of hydro on field and then Chang League doing a Pyronado to spin around to do a lot of vaporize damage with that Pyronado. But then you add in another Dandro off your character to also react with the really really large amount of Hydro that Chao can supply to do Bloom. And so what will happen is that your Dandro off your applicator react with Hydro to do Bloom and then your Shangling Pyronado come in to not only do vaporize but also trigger the C to do a version reaction which do a bunch of damage. Now there is a small problem with this team as we mentioned at the beginning of the video and that is well when it comes to Bloom Reaction, Dandro is the more dominant side. That means when you do a Dandro onto a Hydro Aura, it unfortunately will take away a large amount of Hydro Aura. So a small problem that we might run into depending on how the 3.0 patch actually go is that Shaolin end up applying too much Pyro and start triggering Burning Reaction instead of the Burgeon Reaction, which will be really terrible as the Burning Reaction kind of grief our element application and really mess up the way we want to do things. So because of that, some few crafters out there are actually proposing to use Toma instead of Shangling. In this case, Toma works similar to Shangling to do a lot of pyro off field application to proc Burgeon. But in this case, because Toma Elemental Burst have ICD on it and can only trigger pyro application once every free hit, it will apply a lot less pyro than Shangling and therefore can keep your element application under control. So that is something interesting to experiment in terms of a brand new Burgeon team, but we will have to see when the patch eventually do drop. Alternatively, I think a interesting concept would be something like a double hydro burgeon team. As we know double hydro is already a really strong archetype so adding burgeon on top could be interesting although not necessarily meta. In this case we'll do double hydro to ensure that we always have enough hydro to produce a reaction and then we do a of course dandro characters to do a bunch of bloom and then finally a pyro trigger which could either be off field or on field. The biggest problem when it comes to dandro reaction in general is that it takes a lot of character slot. Keep in mind that bloom 
Bloom reaction, including Hybrid Bloom or Burgeon, take at least three character slot and three element. The reason why we can't run an off field character like Shangling is because there isn't enough slot for us to put a battery in. In this case, we don't really have the opportunity to battery Shangling, and therefore might not really work out well. On the other hand, a character that apply Pyro slowly to make sure that we can trigger the Burgeon on time, as well as not really having that much energy problem, are character like the Luke, Yomi, or maybe some some extent even Hu Tao. So it could be really interesting to see how these characters perform, and we could see a brand new Hyper Carry Burgeon team. On the other hand, I think Hyper Bloom is much more interesting because not only Electro character are more interesting, but there is the possibility of being able to trigger Hyper Bloom as well as Aggravate, which is the Quicken reaction at the same time, which dramatically improve your value when it comes to building Elemental Mastery on some of these Electro characters. A really cool example to try when the 3.0 drop could be something like a Dandro character to do a Dandro Aura, and then you do all few Hydro plus Electro characters like Kokomi and Fisho. In this case, the Kokomi will supply all few Hydro slowly, which will then proc the Bloom reaction to do a bunch of seed on the ground, but at the same time, the officials will attack and apply Electro onto the enemy. Now, of course, because when it comes to Bloom, the Dandro is a dominant reaction, you wouldn't take away that much Dandro gauges when it do the Bloom reaction, and hopefully the enemy will consistently have Dandro aura remaining on them. When you apply the Electro from officials, you'll be able to trigger Quicken status on the enemy, so that your next couple Electro attack coming from Fischl are going to be empowered by the Aggravate reaction. Conveniently, at the same time, when you do these Aggravate reaction and apply Electro application onto the enemy, you will be able to proc the seed that you created from the Bloom reaction as well to do Hyper Bloom. And so this dramatically upscale the value of Elemental Mastery when it comes to official since you're doing two reactions at once now, where one scale really well of Elemental Mastery and the other could hugely benefit from Elemental Mastery as well. One of the big reasons why we use Kokomi over Sing Chiu's or Yelin here is because Kokomi applies slow Hydro application, as in she doesn't apply Hydro as fast as one like Sing Chiu's or Yelin. The problem here is that when you're Danjo plus Electro React to trigger Quicken and then you apply Hydro on top, while it will still trigger Bloom and therefore you can then do Hyper Bloom on top, it will unfortunately also react with Quicken and then take away some of the elemental gauge from the Quicken status and reducing the duration of your Quicken status. And at that point, you might as well just run two Electro to do a full Aggravate team. If we're looking for a Hyper Bloom team, we want to make sure to control all the element application in the corresponding order so that we are able to get everything lined up. So in this case, using a slower Hydro Applicator like Kokomi could be more beneficial than one like Singchus or Yelin, but those do definitely still have potential. Some interesting team could be Double Hydro to attempt to sustain a Hydro Aura. Now, even though Quicken could override your Hydro Aura, with the amount of large Hydro Application you have, you should very easily overtake the Quicken once again to retain a Hydro Aura. And similarly, you could attempt to run Double Dandro characters to do a Dandro Aura instead, which could be very interesting as well, but I don't think it'll be possible possible to do something like a Hydro Aura plus Double Dandro plus Electro, simply because, well, you will very easily get overtaken by your Dandro and your Electro, and therefore you end up doing Quicken Aura with a Dandro on top instead. But of course, a lot of these really depend on how the element actually interact when the 3.0 patch actually drop. In addition to the most important call is that it will probably perform different between each Dandro characters. Maybe, by the way, behold you, I'm asking you, maybe in the futures we get a Dandro Sing shields that can solo sustain some kind of Dandro Aura while being fully off field, that would be awesome and that would be great. But there is still a final team archetype that we should talk about, which is just pure Bloom spam team. While Hyper Bloom and Burgeon require free element to trigger, what you can also do is just spam a bunch of Bloom, because as we mentioned at the beginning of the video, when you have more than 5 seed on the field, the first one you create will explode. This creates an interesting team where you simply just spam Bloom reaction so that the earliest seed will explode. In this case, what you could do is run double Dandro character plus a really fast Hydro applying character like Sing Chos. And then in this case, Sing Chos can actually trigger a lot of Bloom since his C6 will apply Hydro twice, Elemental Skill can apply Hydro, and then of course his regular Elemental Burst can apply Hydro. And each Hydro application will be able to create a brand new seed, and then you will do just the Bloom reaction on itself. Your last slot, you could run a second Hydro character to rock more seed, like double Hydro of Yelin. You could alternatively also just run something like Kazuha and then do a Hydro Infusion on Kazuha to help create more seed as well, but also to buff up some of those Hydro damage that Sinchos is doing. We don't really know if you need two Dandro characters. My expectation, especially with the new 3.0 Dandro characters, 
character is that you should run both DMC and Kali to sustain the Dangel aura, but really come down to how it will actually interact in the future, especially if we get more Dangel character in the future. Alternatively, you can also just do Child on field here for a similar effect, uh, since both of the 3.0 Dangel character are going to be off field, so there could be a chance that we can sustain Dangel aura while off field as well. Now, when it comes to Bloom spamming team, there's actually a secret interaction called fridging when it comes to Bloom spamming. The way you do this is using a crowd characters, applying cryo and danger to the same enemy. Since cryo and danger do not react at all, they will coexist onto the enemy fine. And then you apply hydro, which will first react with the cryo to do freeze, and therefore taking away most but not all the hydro or, or gauge. And finally, the remaining hydro gauge will then react with danger to create Bloom. Now, because the cryo already took away most of the hydro gauge and because dandro is the more dominant element in terms of bloom the amount of dandro gauge you consume is going to be very little so even with very very little dandro application here you can actually get a lot of bloom off because of the freeze or fridge interaction when it comes to a bloom spamming team though i think it could be fun to spam a bunch of bloom seed on the ground and watch them explode but i actually don't know how practical it will be because bloom is also self damaging that means you need to bring a healer which since we don't have any dandro healer mean that your team drafting process is already very limiting. But in addition, Bloom just doesn't do as much damage as Hyper Bloom or Burgeon since, well, those two reactions just have higher scaling. In addition to, it is not deterministic on which character calculation it is going to be used for in terms of damage calculation. The biggest factor that we still don't know about is how are the future's Dandro characters going to apply Dandros. You might have heard this a couple of times throughout the video, but we're desperately looking for a Dandro scene shoes since we because depending on how your Dandro character actually apply Danjo, it will really change up on how possible doing a Burgeon or Hyper Bloom team really is, as a lot of these require precise elemental application timing as it heavily involves you to apply free element consistently at different intervals. Hopefully this video will help illustrate how Bloom works and how it will be meta shifting in the future. However, coming to the end of the video, I would like to remind everyone once again to take the video with a giant grain of salt. As always, we will require heavy playtests when 3.0 patch actually drops to know if some of these are actually going to have real potential or not. The biggest takeaway is of course that depending on how the Danjo character will actually apply Danjo, it might completely perform differently. So take this video more as like a for fun exercise of how these teams might change in the future rather than wow these teams are going to be the meta defining team in 3.0 because at the current moment nobody really knows. As always this video is more of a hypothesis for fun rather than a definite conclusion as we mentioned at the beginning. But with that being said let me know what you think about the potential of Bloom. To be honest I actually don't think it had that high potential. But as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all when 3.0 drop in Sumeru.